So hello everyone. I'm uh, Pierre Paul. I am a Mechanium developer at Unity. I am very excited to be here today because uh, for us it's like the, the hard work that we've put in Mechanium for version 5.0 that I can at last uh, show in details to you guys. So uh, I think we have very, very exciting stuff uh, for Mechanium in 5.0. And today I will show you uh, them. I will show you uh, how we think they should be used. And again, I'm sure that in a couple months, when you guys are going to put your hands on this technology, you're going to find some uh, creative way to use what I'm going to show today. And also, while I run through uh, the demo that I'm going to do today, I'm going to give some little tips and tricks and, and way that uh, we think that mechanism should be used uh, in your game. So uh, this is my only slide that I have prepared for today because I prefer uh, to have fun using Unity directly. So let's go inside of Unity. So in this uh, little example here, we see that we have the, the boy here, here that is our hero for today. And for those who have used uh, Mechanium in the past, the first major difference that you will see is that we have those entry and those exit nodes now inside of the state machine. So these entry and exit nodes allow to have state machine transition implemented inside of the Mechanium state machine. So the way that this works is that when you enter, you, you can do transitions that are directly from one state machine to another state machine. So in the past, in previous version of Unity, when you wanted to do something like here, a transition from fight to idle, you would have to transition directly to states. So in that case, that we're seeing here with many idle states, you would have to have like many, many transition connection and rapidly your state machine would look like spaghetti, which is not super good for state machines to look like spaghetti. So we added the ability to have transitions like this. So this really gives a uh, higher level of control over how you want to uh, drive your state machine. In, in this example, again, you, the, the idea is that when you go inside of the state machine, the state machine evaluates the entry node. And you, know, you see, the entry node here has this list of transition. You can see the transition here as well. And you have those conditions here that the, the, that the transition takes. So, Basically, you can see the entry node as a decision node. I know many of you were requesting to add the ability to have what we call decision nodes inside of Mechanium State Machine. So there we are with the entry nodes. We also have the exit node. So again, this is a way of simplifying your state machine. When you're done with a state and you go to the exit of that state machine, you evaluate the transition that are outgoing of that state machine. So in this case, you see here that I only have one transition that is outgoing from idle, and it's a transition to itself. So in that case, if you think of it a little bit and you look at what I'm showing, you have this idle state machine that is self-contained, so that has a defined entry, a defined exit, and it loops to itself. So when it's going to the exit, it's going back to itself. So a very, very powerful thing about state machine transition is that the state machine can be fully contained. So they clearly define what happens when you enter the state machine, and you clearly define what happens when you exit the state machine. So this means that you can take your state machine and share them between projects, between character in your game. Or even more interesting, you can put state machines on the asset store, and they're already fully functional and fully self-contained. So I think it's a very exciting thing that we added to the Mechanium state machines. Another thing that we added, and that also works really well with the concept of state machine transition, is what we, we call state machine behaviors. So state machine behaviors, and you have them here, it's basically a code that you can attach to a state in the state machine. So you see here, in the in those states, I have put, they all have two state machine behaviors. So I'm going to take a look at what a state machine behavior looks like. So here, 
This is the code for a state machine behavior again. State machine behavior is code that you attach to your state. So we uh, publish five callbacks. So the first callback is unstate enter, which you can define, which is a callback that happens when you enter the state. You have another callback for the state update. Oops. I will continue while we tape the wire. Uh, so uh, as I was saying, we are looking at a state machine behavior where you can implement five callbacks. So the first one is unstate enter, which is called when you enter the state. There's the state update that is done at every frame. There's the unstate exit that is done at the end when you exit a state. And then there's two other ones, which are the unstate move and the unstate IK. The unstate move is used when you want to tweak the root motion of your, your, your uh, animator. And the unstate IK is very interesting. So the way that this works is that normally, when you want to do IK uh, on, a, on a character in your game, you would have this script that would implement the unanimator uh, callback and do all kinds of things that have to be fully generic. So it has to be a rig that will do uh, aiming, that will do grabbing, and so on. So the idea here is that you can define IK rigs that are specific to a state. So it really simplifies, it reduces the amount of spaghetti code that you have to do uh, in order to have IK in your game. So this is what the unstate, the unstate IK does. So uh, we were looking at the uh, idle random logic uh, state machine behavior that I put on the idle state. Let's look at what happens, actually happens in the callbacks. So the first thing that it does in the code is that the unstate enter, we randomize a certain duration. And then on the state update, when we uh, find that we are, uh, when the time of the state is higher than that randomized duration, we change some integer value in the animator, which in this case we call it the idle index. And what we do with that is that we use the idle index in the entry node to uh, transition to different state. So if you followed, what, what the script is doing is that it randomizes the duration of each idle state. So I will activate this right now. So here I activate the script. So here you see that the character is in the IP, IP idle state. He will stay there for a randomized number of time. And then have you seen, he changed to idle happy two after a random number of time and then to idle. And then when it begins to get very boring for the character because we don't take care of him, he's been in idle too long, you see that he's kind of sad and he's waiting and then after another randomized number of time, he's going to go super sad and bored. So as you've seen here, I've used two new features of Mechanium, which are the state machine transition and the state machine uh, behavior. To have a state machine that has randomness in it, and it, again, I insist on that because I think it's super powerful, it is self-contained. So you can take this uh, idle state machine and move it somewhere else or share it or as I said, put it on the asset store. So this is for the idle state. We also have another state machine that is the fight. So you see fight, we use a, a very similar paradigm is that the difference is that we, instead of randomizing the duration that we stay in the state, we randomize what state are we gonna start in. So if I, I go into the attack, the fight uh, state machine, you see that it's never gonna take the same, it's fully randomized. So it's really, a, an if, uh, I think it's more lively to have randomization in your game. So here you see that it's kind of using different animation. So uh, now we have this character that is random, randomly an idol. He's fighting with randomness, but I feel that his kick are kind of feeble. They're, they don't look strong enough. So I, will, I would like to add a little more power uh, to the kick animation. So again, I will use uh, state machine behaviors because they're so useful. So uh, I have a trail effect state machine behavior that I've added to all of my fight state. And here, again, I'm going to run through the code uh, fairly rapidly, but the idea is that on the state enter, we instantiate a trail instance, a trail renderer instance. And then on exit, we destroy it. And then on the unstate IK, we just synchronize the position of the trail renderer to the IK position of the character. So if I go back in the game, 
you see that now, wow, the character is kicking fire. So now that we have this character that is super powerful, let's add an enemy. So it's good, I have a terrible one here. It's an old TV set. So the old TV set is uh, very menacing. So he attacks my character and he brings him to the ground. So let's fight back. So here, I hit the character with a kick and you see that my character is dancing because he's super happy. Again, we use a similar paradigm for the dance. It's completely randomized, so it's not always gonna be the same dance that is going to happen when he, uh, he kicks the television set. Let's do it again. It's a new uh, dance. It's kind of really happy. So, uh, I don't know if you feel this as well, but I think that when he kicks the TV, it doesn't like feel like something is happening. So uh, I would like to add some kind of explosion to the, the hitting sequence. So what I will do, uh, I, I have an explosion object here that is boom, like this. And uh, I've added a very simple animation to it. I can show you the curves. So it's a, it's a simple scale animation that takes the boom, make it infinitely small and scales it up. And then the trick is, and this is something that we often use when we use Mechanim, is that we have a callback here, an animation callback that I've added into the animation of this object, which basically calls disable. And I have a script here on the object that implements disable. And basically what it does is that it sets the object to inactive. So what does this mean is that when the animation will be done, it will be completely played, it will go at the animation callback and disable itself. So you don't have to manage anything else than having this callback called uh, disable here. Uh, and then from the outside, like for instance, when I have some game logic that detects that the kick actually connected to the television, I would just call explode on that object. The game object would set itself active. So what happens when we set an object active, the animation starts to play right away. So the animation will scale up and then disable itself. I also have some code here that it's not super interesting. Basically what it does is that it aligns the POW explosion in, in front of the camera so that it's uh, aligned properly and it's changed the, the, the sprite that is rendered so we have different POW explosion. So let's try this out. Let's start the game. Add the evil television set. Then we do this. So let's see if it connects properly. So you see, it's, I think it's really like, it really looks like a serious fight now. So, uh, one thing that can happen, as I said, the television is very uh, dangerous, it's very bad. So uh, something that can happen is this. The television knocks me up and captures the character. So now the character is stuck in uh, a place that we call the game of bug. So I know you as game developers certainly uh, hate bug as much as I do. So now our character is stuck in a 2D world with bugs that he has to destroy. So the first thing that I want to show you is how we have animated those bugs. So those bugs are sprites that we have animated using Mechanim. Let's take a look at this. So here we have the bug. If I press play, of course, the bug is not gonna do anything. So let's have this bug move a little bit. So here, I have already sprites that are prepared. I will bring those sprites in here. I have this other sprite here, this. So what I will do, I will just play back what I have created now. So if I press play, so you see that it's flapping its wing. Okay, fine. I would like him to move a little bit, so I will add a uh, translation animation to it. Let's just do this right now. And this, uh, like this. So now if I press play here. So the thing is, if I, if I press play on the game, as you, you might already have faced, is that this is what will happen. And the reason why it happens like that 
It's because this is the animation, the translation animation that I have authored right now. So you see that it's, it's just moving from zero to one in the Y axis. But once the animation is done, it just restarts the animation again from the beginning. So this is what we see right now. We see that the, 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 the bug is simply moving from zero to one in, the, in an absolute manner. Because this is the thing. When you animate, normally, you would have an F curve that would, would drive something, in this case, like a translation. But it always animates in the absolute mode. So it always resets back to zero. And this is not what we want in our case. What we want to do is that we want the animation to drive what we call the root motion of the character. <coughs> the root motion is also sometimes called delta animation. So this is a new feature that we added in Mechanim 5.0. It's the ability to author uh, root motion for your characters, or for, your, for anything that you animate using Mechanim. So the way it works, and it's super easy, you uh, take the animation that you've created. So I would expect the animation to be here. And there's a new button here on the animation inspector that is called generate root motion curve. So this button, what it does is that it takes the absolute animation that you have on your object, on the translation and the rotation, and it converts that to root motion animation or to delta animation. So let's do this. So I press on the button. Now I have a message telling me that root motion is driven by curve. So for now it hasn't changed much, and the reason for that is that I have to tell the animator to apply the root motion. So if I click here, I have a fly that is constantly moving upward. So I have authored root motion in Unity in, a, in the easiest way I could possibly imagine that it could be done. So now we are happy. The bug is moving upward. Uh, we would like to have the bug move in all directions. So and for that, we're going to use another a uh, new Mechanim feature that we have in 5.0. It is uh, the Mechanim Asset Creation API. So again, this is something that, that we wish we could have given you guys before, but uh, here it is now in 5.0. It's the ability we just have opened completely the Mechanim Asset Creation API. So now, either it is state machine, blend trees, states, uh, layers, you can author everything using the Mechanim Asset Creation API. So I have a, an example of this right now. I have created a little tool, which I will show you the, the source code right after. So here I create what I call a navigation builder. This is something I use for the bugs now, but if I was to do a little uh, kind of a sprite game with a top-down uh, 2D view, like for instance the old uh, Zelda games, I would use this because I think it's super easy uh, to create new controllers. So. I have this navigation builder here where I have a slot for the target, which I will put the bug in it. Here, I put the bug, and I have all those slots for the animation that goes north, northwest, west, southwest, and so on. So I, will, I have those animations that I already prepared this morning. I'm going to drag them inside. North. Southwest, south, southeast, east and northeast. So I will press create, and what it will do, it will create a controller with a blend tree in it, with a state machine, and uh, all the animation will be placed correctly on a 2D blend tree. I will show it to you. So here I have created the state machine. So you see here, this is the state machine that was just created and assigned to the bug character. And inside it, I have a state. It is called move. And inside of move, I have a uh, 2D blend tree, where, which is super convenient because all the animations are placed correctly on the 2D plane. So meaning that this is the north animation, this is the south animation, this is the west, and this is the s, and so on. So it automatically created that 2D blend tree, and I can preview it right now. And this reminds me that I have to show you this. In the previewer, you know, in the previous version, you could spin around the object and it was kind of stuck into always looking at the, the root. So now we added the ability at last to uh, zoom out, to zoom in, and to pan. So uh, again, uh, sorry about uh, bringing that a bit late to the party, but uh, we have it now in 5.0. So let's press play here to preview. So the, the red dot that I'm moving for those who haven't used the 2D blend tree is basically the, the input. So I do that, and you see that I'm controlling 
the displacement. So you could imagine that this could be an adventure game where you, you would want your sprite to have like top-down navigation like this. So let's see the script that my little tool, if you remember the navigation builder tool that I showed you, I will show you the code that implements this. And again, we really work hard to make the API as easy to use as possible. So you'll see here, I will just concentrate on the part that are kind of more related to the API. When the user press the create button, we d this is how we do it. We create an animator controller, again, a simple call. And then we add the parameters to the controller, which is velocity x and velocity y. We create a new blend tree. And then we do the setup of the blend tree. So here, we set the blend tree to be of type simple directional. Here we set the blend parameters, so blend X and blend Y. And here we take all the animations that were slotted in the, in the UI and we put them as childs of the blend tree at the proper position. So this is a little function here that returns a 2D uh, vector out of the, of the animation. It puts them on the good place on the plane. And here we take the controller that we just created and we set it to the target object. So if I press, and then the, the other step that you would normally have to do in a game is that I have a tiny script here that simply, it's a script that simply gets the, the keyboard input and converts it to uh, mechanism uh, parameters. So if I press play right now, I will be able to drive, oops, this is not active. I forgot to apply root motion. So here I apply it and so uh, I think that 2D blend trees are a really fun way to animate sprites because they work, they work like super easily and, and are, are easy to control and to place on the plane like this. So uh, you should try this. It's fun. Uh, so back to the game. So if we remember our character was stuck in a game of bugs. So here I am. So what I want now is that the character wants to have revenge on the bugs by, of course, shooting laser out of his eyes. So I think that I, let me make that guy a bit bigger. So I think that the character is kind of lacking in expression. He's like this. He's just uh, having his idle animation. He's not even looking at where the, the reticle is. So let's improve that a little bit. So the first thing I would do I would go here and I have something uh, that is called the look at function in the animator. It's something that has been there since the, the, the beginning of Mechanim. And I really think that, that you should use that because it's super powerful and it's really, really easy to use. So let's take a look at the code. So this is the code here that is required. Basically, you implement the onAnimator IK callback. And here you set the look at position. In that case, it's the reticle that I'm moving. And then there's a set look at weight. So the thing is that is re really interesting is that there are multiple values that you can set to the look at weight. And the idea here is that you can set weight for the eyes, weight for the head, and weight for the chest. Meaning that you will have the, normally what I, what I would do is that you would put 100% weight on the eyes. So the eyes are always fully locked to the target. But then you would put less weight on the head and less weight on the chest because you want those to still have a bit of the animation control them so that it, it doesn't look too much like a robot. So this is what I have done here. And if I activate it, you see that like the, the, the chest is still moving a bit with the animation, but the eyes are fully locked to the reticle. And I, I think it's good because you see that the animation, you still feel the idle animation. It's not like, uh, most of the look at I've seen were like the, the character just looked like a robot. And in that case, I think we solved this problem uh, uh, with, with in an elegant manner. So I still feel that the character is a bit, uh, let's say, uh, stiff, like he's not moving at all. So uh, let's add expression to his face. So we have added something in uh, Unity 4.3, I believe. It's something that is called blend shapes. So. Uh, this character here has blend shapes. And the way uh, to control those blend shapes would be to write some code that would connect uh, to the skin mesh renderer and drive 
those values to add expression. This is a way to do it, and this is how uh, a lot of our users are doing it. But I, I, I will show you a, a new way that we can now do in 5.0 that I find it's more interesting. Because an example of a problem that, that we could find is that, now it's kind of hard to read on the, with this resolution, but you see for a smile, it's two different than shape. There's a smile left and a smile, a smile right. And in my case, sometimes I don't really want to have those two separated. So uh, I would want to put them together to combine them as a pose. So what I do is that I create those poses that I would like. And when I say pose, it's, it's more simple than that. It's basically only one frame animation. So here I, I did a one frame animation for blink. For maybe I can show it here. So here I have a one frame animation for blink. I have a one frame animation for smile, uh, squint, which is kind of a negative smile. So I have created all those animations. And now what I want to do is drive them uh, using the mechanism state machine. So what I will do, I will go here. I have a layer that is already prepared that is called facial. Currently it's empty. So let's create a blend tree. I create a new blend tree in that state machine. And it's going to be a new type of blend tree, which is the direct blend tree. You know, for those who, who have played a bit with blend tree, when you have a normal 1D blend tree, it's always a blend between two of your childs. If you have a 2D blend tree, it's going to be a blend of, of uh, more, more than two childs normally. But the direct blend tree allows you to have direct control over the weight of your childs. So that means that. In that case, I think it's super useful with blend shape because uh, you want to have smile, but you might also want to have blink, and you might also want to have a mouth open, so you can combine those poses using the direct blend tree. So let's do that right now. I will add motion field. So here I will put the animation that I've, the one frame animation, which, which we, we could call them poses. I will add them to the direct blend trees. Here, here, and here. So there's a little drop down here, <coughs> pardon me, that you can set the, the parameter that will drive it. The, the parameter that I'm talking about, it is the parameter of the animator. So uh, I will just set it correctly here. Uh, oops, mouth open. Uh, we have smile, we have squint. So here I'm set up. And I can just take a look here. I press play here. Hmm. Seems like I have a small problem here. Okay, so here it works. Phew. So here I can combine the animation. So here I have blink. Here I have the brow, so now he looks angry. And then I can combine them like this and put smile and put blinks like that, make him smile and angry, which is kind of weird, scary a bit maybe. And uh, I can make him blink like that. So once we have that set up, uh, let's use again uh, state machine behavior. So I'm going to make this state here uh, as the default state for that layer. And I'm going to add a state machine behavior to this, uh, let's call to this facial uh, state. So I'm going to add something that I've already created, which is the face logic. So you've seen already that his express expression uh, change kind of looks a bit bummed. So let's take a look at the code that does that. Uh, and here the ID is that we want to take some variable. In that case, we're going to take the, the score of the game and hook it up to a, a float value here that we call happiness. So you see here that we get the current score, we hook it to a float value called happiness, and then we map the, the happiness factor to those mechanism parameters. So if he's happy over a certain value, and we just had fun trying some heuristic to find something that, uh, that looks fine. And here we drive the smile, the mouth open, the closed eyes. We also take care of blinking. So here, again, I'm really a big fan of randomization in game. So here, we have a random uh, blinking time for the eye. So there's c this logic here that does stuff and at some point compute that eye should be closed, so it puts one there. So if we look at it, you see that I would expect him uh, to blink sometime, and, I, and you see him that he blinks. And then 
since I hooked it up to the, the high score, uh, it's payback time now for, the, for our hero. So let's kill the bugs. So you see that when I kill bugs, his expression changes and he kind of become more neutral maybe for now. And then, oh, now he's kind of happy. And then he's very happy. And then he's really, really happy because he killed all those bugs. So, and when he's done with the bugs, he exit uh, the game. So it's a small uh, uh, game that we did. So uh, just to recap a little bit, oops, sorry. Uh, for, for Mechanim, uh, for Unity 5.0, we have added uh, five major features uh, to Mechanim. So the first one is uh, State Machine Transition, which allows you to really simplify the, the logic that you have in your state machine, and that allows to define entry and exit points to your state machine. We've added uh, state machine behaviors, which I think are really, really powerful because they allow you to put some uh, code logic directly inside of a state. So today I showed uh, stuff like randomizing idols or adding trail renderer, but you can really go crazy with what you want to do with that. You can put all your level loading logic inside of a state machine because a lot of time, when you do level loading mechanism, it kind of looks like a state machine. So now you can just put some code in the state. You don't even have to put animation in state anymore. You just put code in there. So you have the visual debugging tool of Mechanim, but you are in fact running code in the state. So you can really go crazy with what you want to do with uh, state machine behaviors. Another thing that we added is the root motion uttering. I think we have a super elegant and simple uh, way to give that to you, our users. So I, I, I think people will have fun. When you do 2D game, it's kind of the natural way to author the animation. Uh, we have the asset creation API, which will allow you guys to have those very uh, powerful tool that will be perfect for your needs, that will allow you to author state machine uh, like you, you would like to, so you can create, like the example I've given for the, the 2D navigation, uh, it, it really makes sense to use the asset creation API to, to, to have this functionality. And then the other uh, great feature that we've added is the direct blend tree, which allows you to set uh, the weight directly in your animation, which is super useful uh, when used in conjunction uh, with the blend shapes. So that is all I have for today. So if you have questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. So no questions for now? Yes? I think I will need the tr translator help. Wait a minute, do we have a translator for helping me for this? No? I would expect that I had a translator. Does it translate in, it in English also? Oh, okay. Yes, I hear it. Thank you. Yeah, some questions are quite a lot. First, is the state machine behavior sealed? Is it sealed? What do you mean by sealed? Is it 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 sealed? 없잖아요. 근데 스테이트 머신 같은 경우는 이제 저희가 커스터마이징 할 일이 굉장히 많이 발생을 하는데 그 그거를 상속받아서 어떤 다른 스테이트 머신 비에이비어로 만들 수 있냐고 여쭤보고 싶고요. So you ask if you if you can inherit from state machine behaviors to yeah. So I I I haven't checked this the this particular part of the code but 
Uh, I would think that it's not sealed, but I would have to, to take a look. But I think it's not sealed and we can inherit from it. I think so. 그리고 두 번째 거는 이제 저희가 4.3 버전에서는 스테이트 머신 액세스 코드를 유니티 에디터 이터널 네임스페이스를 통해서 지금 접근이 가능한데 지금 이런 방식은 네임스페이스가 이전처럼 유니티 에디터 인터널인지 아니면 유니티 에디터 쪽으로 넘어갔는지 궁금합니다. So it the it was in Unity uh, internal before, and the reason was it, it was because it was not really supported for real. So now we have moved everything out of the Unity editor internal, and we have improved it, made it cleaner, made it safer, and it's in Unity editor dot animations. 그리고 저 마지막으로 이제 저희 같은 경우 델그 델타 애니메이션 이미 캐릭터가 델타 애니메이션을 갖고 있을 때. 예를 들어 이미 맞는 애니메이션을 갖고 있는데 그 지금 이제 루트 델타 애니메이션을 추가해서 두 개를 섞을 수 있는 방법이 있습니까? My, first of all, I would like just to add on that point is that uh, we have also added uh, it will it is in it will be in 4.5 I believe we added the ability to have a root motion for humanoid character because before if you played a bit with the mechanism humanoid character yeah. the root motion was automatically computed so now we, we have given the users the ability to specify their own bones because a lot of game studios are like having their own root motion authored with a bone for instance inside of their DCC tool Mayo or, or 3ds max and they bring it in and they kind of lost that information before so now in 4.5, I hope it's really, well, it's in 4.5 that we added that. You can now specify a, uh, a root motion bone for the humanoid. So that being said, if you have uh, many animations that you blend together, that they have different way of interpreting the, the delta, uh, the root motion, it will blend together because we're basically, we're blending deltas. So it will work. Otherwise it's a bug and I would like it to be filled. Thanks. Ah. Ah, so. Animation, uh, mechanism에서 애니메이션들이 메모리에 한꺼번에 올라가는지 아니면 유니티가 동적으로 관리를 해주는지 궁금하고요. 그 애니메이션이 많아졌을 때 한꺼번에 올라가면 문제가 생기는데 메모리 사용을 최소화하는 방법이 있는지 알고 싶습니다. So uh, I, I, I know that we have done, I don't know what version that you are using, but certainly that we did a lot of improvement in 4.3, and maybe that is not enough uh, for your needs, and we certainly did a lot of more uh, improvement in uh, 5.0. And just to throw out numbers like that, because we, we did it a, a couple weeks ago, uh, in some cases where we had really, really complex uh, uh, state machines, like for instance, uh, 900, uh, animation, we cut again by half the amount of memory needed. So uh, that being said, for now, the only kind of, of mechanism I would see that would be useful is to have like, if, if this is not enough for you at the moment, what we have done is to have like different animator controller that you would just set to your, on your character and load it at runtime. I think this is the best solution I can, I can give for now. Uh, I'd say those two, there are some memory loaded that, uh, it depends on your problem, I, I understood, and maybe it, it was a, an error, I understood that your problem was in fact the animator, because the animator is taking memory and the animations are taking memory as well. What we really optimize, we optimize uh, the animator memory that is required when we, you instantiate it, but we also added a mode, again I believe it's in 4.5, that is 
for animation that is called optimal and that really compresses uh, your animation super well. So this might be another thing. So if your problem is more related to the size of the animation, uh, you should check this to use the, the mode that we call optimal. And maybe this will, this normally, we've, again, it, it can save a really a lot of memory and it goes faster also. Uh, 제 질문이 좀 잘못된 것 같은데요. 그 하나의 애니메이터가 그 10개의 스테이트를 갖고 있고 이 스테이트가 하나씩의 애니메이션 파일을 갖고 있, 어, 노드에서 사용한다면 이, 이 애니메이터를 노드할 때 10개의 애니메이션이 동시에 메모리에 올라가는 건지 아니면 플레이할 당시에 어, 올라가는지 그걸 묻고 싶었던 겁니다. Okay, so currently uh, they are always loaded in the memory uh, when you do that. So we don't have any, uh, we currently don't have any way of managing this differently. So currently when you, when you load the animator, it loads the, the, the memory for the animations. So we don't have a mechanism yet for that. 어, 그렇게 된다면 예를 들어서 하나당 1메가의 애니메이션을 사용하게 되면 열, 100개의 스테이트를 갖고 있는 애니메이터를 만들게 되면 아까 절반 정도 차지하게 된다고 하셨는데 50메가 정도의 메모리를 점유하게 될 텐데요. 이런 결과가 맞는 건지 Well, it's, it's correct understanding, but I find that one megabit memory it's, it's for an animation seems to me a lot, so uh, is it a big animation? Does it use the optimal, uh, mem the optimal memory optimization for the animation? Like for me, a megabit for an animation ki kind of looks big. So I'm wondering if it, is it everything, like for me, it's either it is super long and might, I don't know, it seems really like a, a, a huge size, one megabit for an animation. So have you tried the optimal uh, compression mode for the animations? <laughs> 아니요 사용 안 해봤는데요. 아, 일 메가는 어떤 상징적인 예입니다. 아, but but so okay so with the example of one mega of one meg yes it will be uh, it will need to load all the animation uh, in the in your in your I mean this is how it always works the animation are always loaded when you load the level that reference them so. They will load and the animator will need to allocate uh, a certain amount of memory for each animation that you have uh, in, your, in, your, in your animator. So, do we... 네, 지금, 어, 제가 지금 Unity 4.3 버전을 쓰고 있는데요. 지금 기존의 2점대하고 3점대 초반에서 기능들이 많이 지금 사라진 게좀 있는데 그러니까 메쉬 오브젝트 간, 같은 경우에 이제 틴트 컬러나 UV 좌표 애니메이션 같은 경우에 기존에는 그 애니메이션 그 창에서 바로 애니메이션 파일로 조절이 가능했는데 지금 애니메이터를 통해서 애니메이션 컨트롤러를 링크를 시켜서 지금 그 상태에서 작업이 들어가는데 되게 지금 그거 자체가 일단은 무겁고 어, 작업하는데도 좀 시간이 더 걸리기 때문에 기존에 쓰는 방식대로 쓸수 있는 방법이 있는지 아니면 없으면 지금 애니메이션 컨트롤러를 지금처럼 이용을 해야 되는 건지 아니면 따로 스크립트를 작성을 해서 그 작업을 진행을 해야 되는 건지에 대해서 알고 싶습니다. So certainly that the way that we the way that we want to go is to go uh, to the animator way. So uh, at some point we will remove the, the legacy system completely. So, uh, and then if you prefer to use it in a way like similar to the legacy system, we've added in 4.3 the ability to do animator.play, which is something that is really similar to the legacy system. So other than that, I, I, I see one feature that we don't support anymore, and it's the, the rap mode that was ping pong. And 
And we have discussion internally either to bring it back or not, and at some point we might put it back. But other than that, uh, the, the new version, and we have, we have profiled a lot, it kind of shouldn't be slower or heavier than legacy. Uh, if it is, I, I'm curious to see uh, your project that you have this problem with because uh, it, it should be like faster. If you have many animations that are playing at the same time, certainly that it is faster because we multi-thread a lot. And uh, other than that, I'm curious to see what features you think are, are, are missing from the, the, the mechanism system. Because we, we will have to add them uh, if we were to remove completely legacy at some point. So this is why I'm curious to know. Uh, I'm going to talk about the first thing that I'm the 그거를 좀 최적화할 수 있는 방법이 따로 있는 건지 그럼 이후, 이후 버전에서 그거를 개선 사항이 있으신 건지 지금 거기에 대해서 좀더 알고 싶습니다. So again, I, uh, I, would, I think I would have to see your, your, your project. Maybe you can come and see me and give me your business card so I, maybe I can lend a hand because this is a bit uh, surprising for me. And uh, certainly that in the latest version, uh, we don't, I don't see what is this skyrocket thing about memory. So maybe you can just come and see me afterwards and maybe trade emails and we can take a look at it because it, it surprises me. Yeah, I guess. Uh, Thanks. So maybe one last question. Thank 여쭤보는 것 같고 실제로 애니메이터를 붙인 다음에 그걸 띄고 애니메이션 컴포넌트를 다시 붙인 다음에 애니메이션 에디터를 열면은 이전 방식으로 클립이 생성이 가능합니다. So uh, you can use the, you can like you have to manually uh, right click add component and set uh, add animation component. You can do that. You will have to act a bit of your way into the animation clip themselves to set them as being legacy mode. But uh, so it's possible. I mean, some, some people are doing it, but certainly that this is something that we are uh, phasing out in the midterm time frame. So uh, I will say thank you for your attention today. Uh, have a good unite, and thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.